No matter how large or small your project or event is, you're going to be asking the same six questions. The first two are going to be so obvious you may think you don't have to ask them at all. But do it anyway. It'll make the next four less difficult. Question number one. What do I plan to do? You cannot answer that in just one sentence or one paragraph. You can't just say, I'm, I'm planning to do a, a picnic for 300 shut-ins and let them have fun for the day. You have to write it down, a schedule of events so detailed and so clear that anyone reading that same thing will have the same picture in his mind that you have in your mind. The clearer you can visualize it, the more likely you are to succeed in doing it. Question number two. What will I need? What resources? If it's a shut-in picnic, don't just say, I'll need food for 300 people. Or even if you detail the menu, don't just say, I'll need 300 servings of mashed potatoes. How much is that? It may come in gallons. Or you may make the, the mashed potatoes yourself. So how many pounds of potatoes? Be specific about what you'll need. There won't be any surprises otherwise. If you're planning to make a low budget movie, you're going to need location, you're going to need action actors, you're going to need a technical crew, it works. The third question is, how will I get those things I need? Well, if, it's a, if you're planning a wedding, you already know it. You know where to get it, each thing you need, and you know how you'll pay for it. That is, you'll pay for it rather than look for other ways of getting it. But if it's a shut-in picnic and you're wanting to feed 300 people and provide entertainment and all, you have several ways of getting what you need. You can borrow it. You can use what you have. You can beg it from somebody. You can buy it if you have the money, or barter for it. That sounds a little, that sounds old fashioned, but you see bartering even to this day. If you watched a little league baseball game, you've seen that those kids have the name of some local company on their jerseys. That local company bought the jerseys for them. If it's food, it may come from a canning company. And, well, if you're making a low-budget movie, that may be where the rubber meets the road. Because typically when you're writing a movie, you've got the script, and you go out looking for uh, locations, and you're waiting for the actors to come in auditioning. If it's a low-budget movie, that doesn't happen. When I made a movie, I was the only actor. I was the entire crew and the director, including cameraman. My resources were uh, the cameras that I'm using now, PowerPoint, Paint, download for, uh, for public domain movies, and location, whatever I saw around town. So what I did, you know, when you run into problems like this, a script is no good. You start by asking, what resources do I have? And as I did, and then I ask, what movie can I make built around these resources? So that's what I did. To give an example of, uh, of a single scene from that movie, 
I had a photograph of an old house that was used for storage, a short video of a house that was in stage of demolition. I had my back balcony facing the door and I had some little scenes from public domain. I put them together in one little video that is one little scene to make them look, I think, fairly professional. But anyway, find out in detail how we're going to get the things you will need. Now, question number four is, what steps must I take to do what I'm wanting to do, to create the project or the event? You tend to think of saying, now, then i got to do this and this and this, but when you're planning a major event, or even medium range, you, you do it in reverse. You start with the date of the event. What do I need in all this? Which is your answer to question number one. What do I need to do to get it done by that date? I'll give you an example. You want a lot of people at a wedding, or at least a number of them. They're not going to be there unless they get invitations about two weeks in advance to make planning. You're not going to send the invitations until they've written out the envelopes, filled out the cards, put them in, stamped them, and put them in the mail. You're not going to do that until at an earlier date you design all that and have a printer print them up. And then, of course, at a later date, you have to get them back from the printer before you do all those other things. So you work it in reverse. And it doesn't work in a straight line because the entire event is going to involve a lot of things. The food, the location, the people, all like that. Before that gets done, this, this, and this has to be done. Before this, this, and this is done, each one a series of other things. So what you have is a tree going backward so that maybe you have dozens of things to do. Like a spring going into a creek, into a river, into the ocean. That's how it works. Question number five. What can go wrong? Well, that's really a three-part question. What can go wrong? How do you keep it from going wrong? And if it goes wrong anyway, how do you make it go right? If you're planning that picnic, it might rain. No way to stop that. How do you make it go right? Well, when we did it with the Columbia JCs. We made sure it was in a park where there was a larger building nearby so that if it rained, we could move it inside. That's what you do. There are more ways that things can go wrong than right, so figure they could go wrong, plan for them. And question number six, look at each thing you've planned. How can I make it better? Or after you've already done it, ask it again. How can I make it better next time? That's how you do it. Those six questions, that's what gets it done. I'd like to give a shout out to the Columbia JCs, Columbia, South Carolina. Forty years ago, I was part of that group. For a couple of years, I was one of the directors. And what I just told you is part of our leadership training in all these years, I've been using it, and it has worked for me every time. I wish you luck. Thanks for watching.